just by the new way. Spend a couple thousand just to cruise it. Shawty said she love me, but it's fresh and never prove it. I never tell her, but I put it in the music. Well, that's okay. All I wanna do is make the best of my whole day. Thank the Lord up above, get the cream on the side, make you laugh to know it. That's the stuff that I love, la, la, da, da, da. We can be friends if you wanna. We can just talk if you wanna. We can all hands if you wanna. Hey, tell me what you wanna do. We can just laugh if you wanna. Late nights on the stars if you wanna. We can just kiss if you wanna. Hey, tell me what you wanna do. It's like the story of my life. Best friend, but we rocking all the same things. Say you need me, but you really trying to change lanes. Well. I don't even care In my life I don't battle with no fear Fighting dragons always been a real one Hate you saying you're showing love You a real chameleon Get the facts freaking straight Always on repeat Like We could be friends if you wanna We could just talk if you wanna We could hold hands if you wanna Hey, tell me what you wanna do We could just laugh if you wanna Late nights on the stars If you wanna, we could just kiss if you wanna. Hey, tell me what you wanna do. Everybody. Welcome to Wine Talk with Tesh. It's your boy Tesh. Uh, I am highly caffeinated because I have been working on my new gig at the Sutter Club as the sommelier. And I must say it is very, very nice to be back in a sommelier position in a dining room. Uh, I will also say that I have forgotten so much uh, and my feet hurt so bad. Uh, but it is good to be back. And uh, I'm excited that I'm going to continue to be doing this and I'm going to be continuing uh, in my role over there. So uh, all good. And oh, here we go. Uh, my our guest. Hang on. Hold up. All right. Uh, somebody tried to join in and uh, there's C. Belty. Oh, hey, what's up, man? Out here in San Francisco, sharing the wine love. Saw you doing thing, so. Nice, thanks, man. Thanks for saying hello. I appreciate it. What, 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 what are you tasting tonight? So tonight I'm going to be tasting through, and we're going to be walking through uh, a little uh, Cote de Roussillon, and we're going to be drinking a little uh, Grenache. Beautiful. Thanks for saying what's up, Brandon. I appreciate it, man. Hey, all love, baby, all love. Well, Please, we'll have to do this with, with some of your wine soon. Good. All love, baby. <laughs> <laughs> All right, buddy. <laughs> All right, man. You too. Later. Okay. So I'm going to go here and go to belts. Sorry, guys. We're trying to get belts hooked up on the IG. There's belts. What's up, Chris Belts? What's up, my man? How you Good doing? To see you. Pretty well. How about yourself? I'm doing well. Thank you, man. Um, cool. I'm going Thanks for having to... me. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks for joining us. I'm going to send you a request on IG so you're live there. Uh, Diana, what's up? How you doing? Uh, Ashley, what's up? Drew, what's up? Raquel, what's up? Uh, hello, everybody. Thanks for joining on IG. We're going to get Chris uh, hooked up on his phone here. Chris, I just sent you an invitation uh, on your phone, so you should see an invite. Uh, if you're watching the live stream uh, there, just click on accept, and then you'll be live on IG as well. Uh, okay, there bit. you go. And then I'm going to turn my volume down on my phone so we don't blow it up. There we go. Cool. Everybody can hear us on IG. Everybody can see us on Facebook and on YouTube. Thank you guys for dealing with the uh, technical difficulties while we get connected. Uh, <laughs> I'll be sending everybody a $50 bill. Have you tried turning it off and turning it back on again? <laughs> uh, Auntie Nora is in the building. What's up, Auntie Nora? Thanks for tuning in. I appreciate it. 
Um, everybody, this is my my friend uh, and my colleague who's been in the industry for a long time, Mr. Chris Belts. Uh, Chris, thanks again, man. I know you already said uh, thanks for having me, but I appreciate you making time uh, because I know that you are a family man like myself, right? I certainly am. I have a three-year-old, well, almost to be three-year-old daughter. Nice. And what's your name? Uh, Leona. We'll call Beautiful. Leona for short. Beautiful. And Chris, uh, can you give Cheers. us just a, a quick, uh, I like it. Give us a quick background on, uh, on your kind of tenure and your involvement in the wine world, obviously just like on the restaurant scene, uh, on the restaurant side, but then also how it's been for you on the sales side. Sure. Okay. Um, you know, it's, definitely started out of hospitality but uh i actually got into wine my stepfather was into wine and he was into amador zinfandel so i i got into checking out amador back in the early early 2000s like 2000 2001 right along the time that i was getting uh, started with my career ended up being career in hospitality uh moving through bus and tables obviously getting closer to wine the car the general looks that just kind of kept going and then to get more serious you know we uh um you know i got into the sommelier the court of master sommeliers for the uh to get certified and to to take everything to a higher level my service my knowledge my tasting ability just you know just getting deeper and deeper um into the wine world and actually tesh if you if you remember we both went to this same uh um introduction which is um, indeed uh, after that, I, I gained a position uh, working at a restaurant in downtown um, for sommelier. So table side for quite a while, wrote a bar program, wrote a wine list, uh, worked through the, the difficulties of understanding how to portray what I know, what I wanted to know, what I wanted to taste and to what the guests wanted to taste. So, you know, got that figured out and then uh, started pouring wine for the people and always at your service of course and uh i moved into sales about three years ago mm -hmm. which was an interesting transition but uh i keep that kind of that hospitality focus service focus. and uh you know as i you know as i uh, present and uh, chat with with folks like you of course for sure for sure are you are you in uh, this is kind of a loaded question because we're live everywhere so are you enjoying being on the sales side as opposed to okay. being, as opposed to being uh, on the restaurant side? I, I love sales. I mean, uh, I mean, obviously I have my folk, my focus, right? The brand that I represent that I need to remain true to, um, to you know, to keep pressing and uh, to sell honestly. And it's a, it's a competitive world. There's a lot of delicious wine, but not only that, but it's, it's, um, it's wine all day. Like my phone calls are about wine. My, my meetings are preparing for these meetings are about wine. And it's, it's you know, the sommeliers is one way to get as close to wine as possible. This was just a next step for me. And so like, you know, like everything, it has, you know, challenges, which just like everything that we do, right? And those are the, that's the, those are the fun parts, you know? So right. like, um, I, I love it, man. I'm super close to wine. It's, it's wine all day for me. The, the conversations, the knowledge, we work on education, in this company and the company I work for wine boat um, intensely. And, and I welcome that. It's, it's great. Yeah. I mean, I remember uh, uh, a long time ago, I'll share a fun story. A long time ago, I interviewed with your boss. Uh, I had only had my level one pin and, right? uh, and he asked me a question uh, that I didn't know the answer to. And he was like, yeah, see, that's the kind of thing that we'd want to know for somebody who's coming into this position. And I was like, no, nah. Fuck this guy, man. <laughs> but no, I like, you know, and, and to his to his point, like it, it, to your point, even uh, I know I know that your boss uh, demands uh, the highest level of, uh, of of wine knowledge and, and investment. You know what I mean? Like he wants you to be that guy who can speak about everything. Um, so, yeah. So, yeah. Um, sorry. One sec, Chris. I think your uh, your computer. um Froze, I'll get froze again.
in the meantime, I'll turn up my volume. There we go. On Instagram so I can hear you. Okay, cool. Yeah, so anyways, no, but like he's a, he's a good dude, right? And and he he was doing his job by like making sure that he's bringing on the right person and at that time I wasn't the right person for him. Um, you know, and admittedly so and I've said this on on the show uh, a multitude of time um, a multitude of times here on uh, on uh, Wine Talk with Tesh is that my my biggest strength is going to be able to speak uh, to people and make wine relatable, not necessarily that like I'm going to rain all this information down upon you. Um, it's just not really my forte. Sure. Uh, so yeah. So uh, all that to say, uh, Winebow uh, is a serious wine company. <laughs> they really are, man. And yet, the portfolio speaks for itself. And, and the wines that you uh, presented to me that we chose for for this tasting, um, I think that they'll kind of speak for themselves too. Who's watching on Facebook and on YouTube? I need to know because the chat is awfully quiet. So far, Auntie Nora has said hello. I know Diana's watching on Instagram, um, but I need to know who the hell is out there. Uh, you said that you would miss it, but all I heard was crickets. Uh <laughs> So I know a lot of, a lot of the times uh, y'all remember that jam. Y'all probably don't remember that jam. Um, I know that a lot of times uh, some of my viewers will watch it uh, post uh, post the actual event because of scheduling, tasting, kids, all that fun stuff. So uh, anyhow, if you don't, for those of you who are watching along, if you don't already have a glass of the Bastide Mirror Flores, that's going to be the first one that we're going to taste tonight. Uh, pour yourself a glass. I already have one. Uh, and, uh, Chris, why don't you tell us, uh, a little bit about the winery itself? Like, give us a breakdown of the history, the people that we need to know about, uh, all that fun stuff. We want to know about this wine. So. Sure thing. Uh, so the name Lafage, Lafage is a, or Domaine Lafage is the winery. Um, and Jean-Marc Lafage, he, uh, his family has been in the Cote de Roussillon. Um, growing grapes since the well about the 1700s probably un, not unlike many families in wine growing regions in France but uh, Jean-Marc Lafage was uh, it was a part of a cooperative of growers and they would sell their fruit in bulk um, as a cooperative to other um, domains or even sometimes sell and choose to negotiants but uh, um, he decided to take uh, you know, a break away from his cooperative and begin his own domain, continuing on his all his knowledge of like all the vineyards and all the sites um, in the Cote de Roussillon, more specifically within this little area called the Cote de Catalan. Um, looking at the geology and the vineyards, they're like varying, you know, mineral and and volcanic soils, lots of history in the um, in the top. Yeah. All right. Mitchell used to uh, and I'll, I'll work on this thing at the same time. So that's basically what, uh, what the deal is. And uh, he has multiple wines. Um, and obviously the best deep Flores is a Syrah-based red wine blend. And it's very true to, uh, you know, kind of to like a Southern Road-ish style without being as expensive as Southern Road. And I think that's the focus here when we get to Cote de Roussillon and as a grower, what he can, what he buys is, you know, 55, 75 year old grapevines um, and just good, good value choose for sure of high quality. I mean, it's a little of all region, you know. So, as far as like being it's a wine on, wine on its own or winery on its own, I think it's been about 30 something years. Um, but, uh, you know, as a grower, as a family of winemakers, as a history of winemaking, it's been in the game for centuries. It's pretty interesting compared to, you know, like people don't realize like how young, uh, you know, e even like Napa is, right? Like, which is like art, like California is like really, like comparatively speaking, right? Like it, it's fairly young compared to the rest of the world. Uh, while um, the rest of the world, like they have roots that go back like, oh, my grandparents, grandparents, grandparents were like, you know, 
we're, we're wine, we're, we're grape growers. And, and so naturally we we do the same thing. Um, Christy, thanks for watching. She said, I have a, I've got a, a friend and a client who said she's watching with no sound in her car while in the Costco gas line, hashtag dedication. Um, Diana, thanks for ordering more already. I'm glad to hear that you really enjoyed it. I love this wine. Uh, obviously Chris loves this wine cause he poured it for me. Um, and Tori, thanks for watching on multiple platforms. I appreciate the love. Um, okay, so we talked about uh, the name and the background uh, that is associated with the actual winery. Uh, it's been around for 30-ish years. Um, all right, T tell us about what, about this. So, well, hang on, let's back up. Let's talk about the region that we're in. We're in Cote de Roussillon, right? Uh, Jordan will throw up the map on uh, on all of this stuff. Mm -hmm. Oh, did I lose you on? Uh... Oh no, I saw it. Your phone just fell. <laughs> no, I'm. There you go. All right, cool. I got you on on IG. Um, your uh, your computer is uh, yeah. connection isn't doing too hot. There you go. Seems to be mostly in sync. Uh, well, I just okay. Cool. Um, All right. We'll do our best. There's a, there's there's always technical difficulties. We'll do our best. Um, Is there always? Oh man. You know the last one, right? Like Joni Joni didn't have headphones on, so her 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 voice echoed on Instagram the entire time, and then she like muted it, and I was like, oh, nice. jo Joni, I love you, but come on, man. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, so so we're in the where is Cote de Roussillon in France? So he's got the map up. Um, can you just kind of tell us, like, roughly in France where we're at? Yeah, we're in we're in the southwest coastal region of France. If you want to be specific with the Cote Catalan, the Cote de Roussillon is actually very large, and but we're looking generally in the southern. Um, western part of France on the way towards Spain. Cool. So for those of you who are looking at the map, um, there's the, uh, uh, what are they called? It's the Pyrenees Mountains that separate this, was separate Spain and France, right? Uh, so there's an orange area on the map. Uh, that's the region that we're going to be in. So for anybody who's wondering where to look on the map, that's where we're at. All right, cool. So that's where we're at in the world. So you have a sense of place. Um, tell us about this actual wine. Tell us about the the, the varietal. <laughs> Drew, Garris Drew Garrison said, there's so many hunks on one screen. <laughs> Back at you, baby. Get in here, Drew. Back at you, baby. <laughs> uh, <laughs> we, need a, we need a couple of big hunk bars. Remember those? <laughs> I do. The only reason I ever the only reason I ever knew about a big hunk bar was because a girl gave me one in high school. And I was like, a big hunk? Yes, oh shit. All right. That's what's up. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even know that was a thing. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Um, no, so tell us about the varietal the breakdown and how they and how they treat the wine. So does it see oak? Is it stainless steel? All that fun stuff. Mm -hmm. Break it down for us. Yeah. Yeah. We're looking at 60% Syrah. Um, and 40% Grenache, which is, I think you're going to see a Grenache situation of this area, but all of it. And we've got some higher elevation straw here, 60%, um, 40%, I think I mentioned that. Um, practicing organic, not certified, which is pretty common considering how expensive it is to certify. Mm -hmm. And especially when you have a lot of vineyards you're taking care of and or own. You know, you practice organic, you feel good deep inside. If it's not on the label, then I guess... We move on, but uh, um, organically practicing, practicing fruit and uh, native fermentations, meaning it's not inoculated with any certain type of yeast. There's whatever yeast happens to be on the berries or or in the terroir, in the winemaking facility, helps jump the fermentation. So the crush the berries, the yeast is already there. So that, again, contributes to our sense of place. Um, it's fermented in concrete, and then it sees a little demi demi weed which is a massive French cask. Um, that's a neutral 
no, no new oak on here, no barite, no tight oak, no vanillins really to impart, um, just to help kind of bring the structure as it settles and kind of gets elevage going so it can be put into bottles. So it's, it feels it's complete. Yeah, this wine, I mean, um, just, just hearing you talk about like, you know, how there's no new oak, it's fairly, it's all neutral. This wine to me is like an incredibly balanced wine. It's not like, it, it's clearly like, the, the, it has tannic structure, but you can tell that that tannic structure comes from the grape itself, not from the oak. Yes. Yes. Yeah. This is all, all grape, all due to the tannic structure and, uh, you know, just the kind of the structure of the actual grapes, which you're going to find some pretty brooding Grenache in the Southern France because Grenache is really happy in heat and uh, can develop a, you know, can develop planet, you know, really tries to reflect where it's one of those cool grapes. So, um, Diana, I'm glad that you like it with the ribeye. Uh, first of all, a ribeye is always a great choice. Uh, but with Syrah, Grenache, I think that ribeye is fucking, sorry, pardon me, I cuss a lot. Uh, it, I think, I think it's brilliant together. I think that it's, it's an underrated pairing. Uh, and people, people often just turn to cab when they think steak and, uh, turn to Syrah, turn to Grenache more often. And you'll find out when you get to the Alta Moncayo too, uh, how beautiful that's going to be with that as well. So I'm picking up on some beautiful tasting notes, but Chris, can you, can you hit us with some things that, that people might be picking up on on this wine? Um, I, I love Syrah and for its kind of fresh herb kind of presentation, mm -hmm. it's always one of the things that jumps out to me. Along with the fruit, obviously it has like some not quite sweet brambly fruit, but it has like this kind of like crunchy blackberry thing going on usually for me. And, but mostly I'm looking for like this herbaceous quality, like like semi dry, like tarragon, you know, there's like a little fresh oregano kind of, you know, mm. kind of floating around with those fruits. And uh, that kind of are signifiers for me of like a well developed Syrah grape, uh, well, you know, not messed with wine for sure, because the subtleties of the of the Syrah are going to come through. Uh, and I think the Grenache here serves as just kind of reinforcing the fruit. And I think the Grenache here kind of pushes the, the the tannin a little bit but fruit fruit profiles more fresh than stewed like it's not super like old world over the top where like if balsamic you know like or dried fruit it has like a fresh quality that i really like as a producer which he tends to do consistently uh, so go with blackberries uh, so black uh tarragon fresh oregano um maybe some like bean cherry maybe a little cherry cola and uh cherry cola is um, a great call yeah. i like to keep my tasting notes simple yeah yeah i like cherry cola that's that's a great call um i'm getting a little bit of pepper on the finish too oh sure yeah definitely a fat signifier maybe a little maybe a little gaminess maybe a little salmon or in big fat's a hard one for me because i don't really get it online because it's such a fresh style but that can be a, a signifier as well for sure for sure um, let me see. All right. So we talked about, oh, uh, what would you pair this with? So I, so because we did a, a Syrah Grenache blend and we did a Grenache, I told everyone at home to, uh, make a mistake in a dining room. Uh, if you were in a dining room and somebody were to order this wine and be like, Hey, what, what would you recommend? Um, if they were leading with the wine and wanted dinner to go with it, I mean, a little feedback. Feedback. yeah, I can hear you. Okay. I'm going to push, I'm going to push through it. Uh, I mean, obviously a ribeye is an excellent choice, Diane. I mean, that's, that's definitely at the top of the list here, but I mean, I think we can, we can handle some duck here. Some, uh, some, you know, some other game birds, but some Guinea hen, um, duck confit for sure. Sausages. I mean, this this wine is sturdy enough, but definitely meats um, are going to be at play here. And I think some of the more uh, gamier kind of meats, like uh, or you know, like duck, I wouldn't consider too gamey in the breast. But when you get down to like cassoulet and sausage, 
Right. You know, I think that this one I can handle pretty nicely. So if I had duck cassoulet on the menu, I'd be like, you're going to be very happy here. You know? So I like your duck confit call, right? I agree that a duck breast is probably going to be a little too gamey. Uh, but like duck confit where it's just like cooked in its own fat, uh, I think that that is a great call as well. I'm hungry. Sounds good. <laughs> Me too, man. <laughs> Me too. My plan was to come home and make a, make ribeyes for dinner, uh, but you know, as you know, right? Like I'm I'm I've got this new gig at the Sutter Club, and we had a big wine sale, so uh, I've been putting away hundreds yeah. of cases of wines um, for, uh, for for our members uh, at the Sutter Club, and uh, it's it's uh, it's a really cool event. It's a big event, um, but man, I've been slinging boxes around all day. So by the time I got home. Uh, my wife was already prepping dinner, uh, so we ended up having chicken fajita bowls, which was amazing, by the way. Uh, but it didn't like it didn't really go with these wines. I was like, ah, that's cool, you know. Um, uh, still, a, a ribeye does sound really good even now. I might stay up late and make myself one later, anyways. Mad Dog Mike, what's up, man? Thanks for tuning in. I don't know if you tuned in and tuned out already, but uh, I appreciate you. Uh, David Alessio said, virtually no tannins or other flavors. He said, I, I'm going to read this the way he said it. He said, Syrah is my favorite grape. Syrah. <laughs> that sounded like, <laughs> it sounded like, you know what it reminds me of? It reminds me of Hansel. He's so hot right now. Hansel. <laughs> Uh, Syrah is my favorite grape Syrah. I, I love Syrah too. I really do. I wish that more people drank it. And, um, and yeah, so I, I'm with you. Uh, beautiful. Thanks. Thanks for presenting this wine. Cause I, I think that this is a stunning wine and it's in a great price point. Um, and it just, I just think it totally delivers. I'm so, I'm so, glad, you got to so, I'm so glad you got to deliver to so many, uh, enthusiast wine drinkers, you know? Yeah, for sure. I mean, everybody's really enjoying it, you know, and um, and yeah, I think that uh, I, I think that for those because I had a few subscribers because, you know, it's summertime. Right. And like I in the summertime, notoriously in the restaurant industry, things get slow. Well, for me on on this side of the business, on the retail side, I didn't realize that it would follow suit a little bit. Uh, so I had I had a couple of people drop out this month that like normally would buy the boxes. And I was like, oh, shit, like I got I got a lot of wine, man. Like I don't know what I'm gonna do with this, but thankfully, the, for those of them who, who did stick around, uh, they're not just uh, drinking their wines, but they're also reordering them too. So, which has been great. Um, so, you guys, you guys keep 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 everything flowing, and I appreciate that for all of you guys who are watching. All right. So, uh, do you have anything else that you wanted to add, uh, Chris, about the uh, mirror floors? I mean, I just think it's a, an excellent, it's just an excellent Southern French wine. And it's like such a value as the Cote de Rhone becomes more and more inaccessible and Chateau de Popkins starts blasting off. And like, this is where you want to go for like a good value for like your Syrah or your generally Rhone varietals, you know, and uh, check out other stuff that they do. You know, like, I mean, there's a lot of good value and a lot of good wine in Cote de Rousseau. So. So that's a good recommendation. It really is. My cousin just messaged me yesterday uh, and he was like, hey, you know, I need a white wine that'll work with spaghetti and meatballs. And I threw him a couple of Italian white wines that he hadn't had before. Uh, and I threw him a couple of Spanish white wine varietals as well. And I was like, try these, right? Like these are probably what I would go with. Um, and uh, nice. and he was like, wow. He was like, there's so much that people don't know about. And all I did was I just threw him like six varietals, like three Italian, three Spanish, right? And he was like, "Dude, we need to, um, we need to, we need to like get people more acclimated to drinking a wider variety of wines." Auntie Nora said, "I'm guilty. I'm a rosé and white wine drinker in hot weather. Don't hate me. Ain't nobody mad at you. You'll really enjoy next month's box because I think I'm gonna nobody. do all white wine next month." Um, because it is, it's getting stupid hot outside and I just want to drink something like really cold and refreshing. I'm just keeping it 100 with you guys. Uh, I don't want to be drinking. I mean, these are nice reds because like, I do think that these drink really well at cellar temperature or even with just a slight chill on them. Um, like I said in my email, but, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I want some white wine. It's white wine time. So we're going to, we're going to drink some more, more dope stuff, uh, in the near future. Um, but for now. 
let's move on to the next wine. So uh, pour yourselves a glass of the Alto Moncayo, uh, the Veraton Garnacha. This this wine, what you guys should know about this wine is I, I, I we paired this wine on a menu uh, at the kitchen while I was there. Um, and so when when um, when Chris Belts brought it back to me and was like, hey, I have this again. Um, he was, it was like, bro, I, like, I'm, I already have a feeling I'm just going to go with that one. Uh, cause I knew, I already knew about the wine and I knew that it was going to deliver on a different level. Uh, David Alessio said, no, <laughs> I guess I got in the lot in the wrong time of the year. Come on, man. A little bit of white wine ain't going to hurt you, man. Plus I got all kinds of red for you to drink. So it's not like, it's not like red wine this season is going away. It's just. Uh, I just thought it'd be cool to do an all white wine box uh, of varietals that, like, I think are a little bit more obscure, you know. Uh, Vermentinos, Vernacias, uh, Vieiras, Verdejos, stuff that I think, like, we should all be drinking. Um, and they're not your typical everyday selections that I think. By the way, for those of you who are wondering why I'm wearing a jersey, it's because I'm wearing my uh, Agraba soccer jersey courtesy of Aladdin, um, you know, we got to keep it 100 and represent Prince Ali. All right. Uh, Chris. <laughs> yes. Uh, tell us about uh, Alto Moncayo, uh, a little bit about the history again, uh, what you love about them, about the people that we need to know. Just hit us. Hit us. Tell us about this one. Alto Moncayo um, is a winery located about, about 1,500 meters in a super dry continental type of climate in an area called Campo de Borja. But before we go into that, because I'm sure those questions will develop, I the reason why I love Alto Moncayo is because they focus and they have been focusing on making um, the, what they would want to be a brutal Spanish culture. So over the last hundred years, they've been basically doing selection of Sol to create these vineyards um, of the prime examples of what uh, Garnacha can do here in Spain. And uh, it's just refreshing to see Garnacha taken to such a serious level where the vine age, vine ages approach, you know, and some of some of the wines approach over 120 years old. In this wine, we're looking at more like 30 to 50 because it's just wow. the style of this wine. Um, but still, I mean, that's a significant, uh, significant age. These are, you know, just the Grenache, like if you can see, like, as you, you know, as you make your way through the wine, you know, it's, it's kind of burly. It's got this, like, this power to it, you know, but still good acidity. And um, I just really dig it as a good example of Grenache. And getting away from Spain, which is, can be most people think of Tempranillo or Rioja, or maybe even Gumilla, or Albarino, obviously we're in different worlds, but right. this this Garnache has carved out its own area, kind of in like the northern, almost eastern part of part of Spain. So for those of you guys it's who just are, got its own identity. Yeah, for sure. For those of you guys who are looking uh, on the map, where where did you say it's coming out of again? It's Campo de Borja, and uh, so we're like on our way to the kind of in, in between out. Got you. Okay, cool. So those for those of you guys who are who are watching uh, or looking at the map right now, uh, we're talking about the the north right there. Uh, sorry, the northeast corner of the map uh, on, in the red zone, uh, and then just going north there where you see uh, the Pyrenees Mountains, which divides France from Spain. That's that's the region that he's talking about. Um, uh, Campo de Boria. Oh, I actually see it. Actually, smack. If you look at the orange on the map and you look just south of that, the first touch of pink south of the orange, that's Campo de Boria. And so you have an idea of where we're at uh, in, in northeastern Spain, for those of you guys who are following along on that. Um, so, yeah, this is dope. Uh, dude, I could – real talk. I could smell this wine all day. Like – 
this this wine just has an absolutely stunning nose. Um, I want to know from all of you guys who are drinking along at home, uh, what are you smelling? I know somebody said that this next one is really rich. Uh, somebody said there's a lot of granite in it. Um, Diana, let's go to Spain together. I, I, I need to go to Spain. I have a funny story about that. Okay. Uh, is, sorry, Chris. It's okay if I tell a quick story, man. All right. So, so, oh, hang on. Before I jump into my story, David Alessio wants to know, uh, um, Chris, do you think that this uh, Alto Moncayo will age well? Uh, absolutely. I really do. I agree. I think it'll age incredibly well. All right, so uh, is that your kiddo? <laughs> yeah, she's, she's here. She can say hi. Say hi. Say hi. hi, princess. How are you? My <laughs> my my daughter was like uh, j just a few days ago. My daughter Eliza was like. You know, Dad, it's cool that you do those wine talks with Tesh. And I was like, yeah. And she goes, yeah. And she goes, um, here's the thing, though. Uh, it's really boring. And I was like, it's really boring? What do you mean it's really boring? And she's like, I get locked up in the bedroom and have to watch TV the whole time. And I'm like, dude, you're saying that like it's something like – we're forcing you to be like, you're going you're gonna to watch TV anyways. You know what I mean? Uh, she's so funny. Uh, so yeah, dude, it's all yeah. good. It's, it's, that's a part of being a parent, right? Um, it's a part of working from home. So, um, cool, David. Get, hey man, uh, do you boo boo do what you need to. Uh, oh, so I got the story about Spain. Okay. So I leave my restaurant gig at a notable restaurant here in Sacramento. And during my tenure there, right over the course of a year, I had sold X amount of a particular wine. And a part of moving so much of that wine was that the uh, the winery was going to sponsor a little trip, right? And just be like, hey, you know, come, come to Spain. We appreciate all the support that you've given us. This is our way of giving back to you. Uh, and also educating you more on what we do and all that fun stuff, right? So uh, when I left this notable restaurant <laughs> um they were like well you know you purchased and sold all of that wine uh with our with our with like our buying power so the trip actually belongs to us and uh they gave it Ooh. to a, a a current employee even though like because like i was on my way out right i had so, there was not a single bottle of this wine left in inventory it was gone i sold all of it right uh, no, they were like, they were like, yeah, you're not going to Spain, dude. That's that's kind of our thing. And I was like, damn. So all that to say, uh, Belts, if you got a winery who needs some love, baby, I'm, I, you know, wow. I want to go to Spain bad. I heard that. Okay, I'm gonna get you. Let's get you back to Man, Spain for you real, know, dude. This is a karmic. This is a karmic magnet. It should be happening. That's what's right? Up. Yeah, man. That was rough, dude. And it, and you know what? Like, I had mentally prepared myself. Unbelievable. It, it happens, right? I had, I had like, mentally prepared myself for it. Like, I was like, uh, you know, there's a chance that they're going to say this, right? Um, because I know the game, right? Like, I know how it is. Like, they're like, oh, it's ours. And I wasn't sticking around. But my thing was, like, I did a lot for them. Like... I did a lot for them. It would have been a nice gesture to have been able to go on that trip and finish that much stronger. Um, you know, and I worked my ass off till the very, very last day um, as, I, as I would anywhere. I worked my ass off. And uh, yeah, it was just kind of like a meh, meh move. But, you know, teach their own. You live and you learn and you move and you grow on and uh, you do bigger and better things. So here I am with my own business and doing my own thing. Anyways, um, still bone. yeah, man, it, yeah, it, it happens, but I, I think it's a great story though. I think it's like, Hey man, like it's like, it's like when uh, you take that, that, you know, that last minute shot, that last second shot and like, you know, 
the shot should have gone in and you got fouled and they didn't call the foul, you'd be like, man, I got robbed. That's what happened. I got robbed. Some <laughs> bullshit. <laughs> That's what I equated man. to. <laughs> Ain't nothing I can do about it. Man, I just got robbed. Dirty. <laughs> All right. So, yeah, so it sounds like. I mean, anyways. Uh, so we're drinking 100% Grenache, right? 100% Grenache, also known as Garnacha in España. That's right. Um, what else do we need to know about this wine? I, you know, I think it comes from this really aggressive, dry continental climate that's really beaten down by these by winds. It's super hot there. Um, it's got this dramatic landscape where there's like it's tons of rocks. These vines are super low to the ground because of how much wind and um, how old they are. They're sturdy, like almost like little bonsai trees in a sense. I mean, to, for lack of a better term, but these thick stocked old vine Grenache that just like. A lot of money too, man. Go ahead, I'm sorry. A lot of money too. Uh, pre 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 can, no joke. Uh, pre rots can be crazy expensive. Yeah, I agree. Um, this wine to me is one of those ones that like vintage after vintage, I think it's just going to be an all-star and it's just because the producer uh, knows what the hell they're doing. Very clearly, they know what they're doing. Um, and uh, when, when we when we revisited it, right, and tasted it together, I was like, this wine is an absolute winner. And I, I think that people sleep on, on stuff like this and they shouldn't because this is, a, this is an all-star of a wine. If you like big wines, you know, like Spain is pretty they're similar to California. You know, there's a lot of fruit, um, you know, similarities as far as like how grapes grow, you know, and like just because it comes from, you know, uh, Spain and it's not ultra expensive Cabernet, like you're getting huge value here. You're getting a big wine, lots of fruit, lots of power, lots of, and a little finesse in the end. You can taste the acidity, you know, like you can tell that like, you know, these are well-grown grapes. Right, right, right. Jordan is uh, finagling the... <laughs> Jordan, I fucking love you, man. <laughs> Jordan is a gangster. Dude, look at Jordan just, like, holding his phone up. Like, like yeah. here, I'll turn my mic to see, uh, Chris. He's got you up on Instagram on, on this thing. So, so I think you're good. So I'm going to turn up my volume on my phone, and I'll turn my mic a little. So hopefully everybody can hear you and hear me. Um, I'm, trying, I'm trying to get this other stream going. Should I not worry about it? Um, can everybody on Facebook and YouTube, can you guys hear Chris okay? Every time he talks, my uh, my microphone lights up. So I think that I think that he's probably okay. Uh, so, yeah. Chris, don't worry about it, man. We, it'll be fun to watch Jordan hold his fucking phone up to the camera. Okay, yeah, I use that. I use Chrome too. Uh, Diana said YouTube is good, but like we'll uh, we'll 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 see if we can get you connected, uh, and then that way uh, Jordan doesn't have to hold up his phone the whole time. 
Uh, Tori said, we're back to IG because the other streams were uh, chipping. Sorry, Tori. Uh, thanks for being patient, everybody. We appreciate you. Um, yeah, hopefully hopefully in the near future. I got to figure out what's next for Wine Talk with Tesh. While we wait, I want to get into tasting notes in just a minute. We're going to give Chris a chance to connect uh, on the thing um and do the damn thing but uh while, while we wait I, I need to figure out what's next for wine talk with tesh i need to figure out uh if um first of all let me say this i don't want to stop doing the boxes because i think that the boxes are cool and fun um i need to figure out if we want to keep doing the virtual thing like we are doing right now uh or if i need to change the format and make it like a live event because we can do those now um let me know what your guys' thoughts are uh the boxes aren't going anywhere you don't have to worry about that regardless of what happens uh you guys will still get boxes uh because i think if, if anything we'll just call it like a membership or we'll call it like a like a you know ex exploration box or something um but yeah. Oh, and Auntie Nora, real quick, uh, let's hike the Camino de Santiago. That sounds like something that you would be great at. I don't want to go to Spain and hike. I want to go to Spain and I want to drink ob obsessive amounts, obscene amounts of wine. Uh, <laughs> I want to go from one winery to the next and drink and eat food and take a nap and have the siesta in the afternoon and go back out and do it all again until two o'clock in the morning. Uh, that's my ideal vacation. Um, but hiking, hiking is not like, I, w I love a good hike. Uh, but like, it's not my, that's not my, that's not my first thought about something dope to do in, uh, in any place that I would ever go visit. So, so yeah, anyways, uh, you guys don't, don't sleep on that question though. I want to know what you guys want to see. I know that virtual works great for us since we aren't in Sacramento, but a live event could be fun sometimes too. We would hike and drink any and hang out. I feel you. Um, perfect. Uh, I think Chrome did the trick, man. Uh, so your your feed is a little bit better there. So I'm going to turn my IG volume down so it doesn't interfere here. And I can hear you. I'll pop this back in. Um, I know that some of you guys are out of town. And for that reason, I want to keep the virtual piece uh, a part of it uh, to some extent. Like even if I did it live, right, like I would still, um, I would still like, like broadcast the live, the, the like live dinner or like the live tasting. Um, but I, I want some feedback because, uh, I know summertime schedule is, uh, is difficult and you know, the sun's going down later and all that fun stuff. So some of y'all have kids and I know that that throws a wrench in things too. Uh, give me some feedback on what you want to see happen with, with wine talk with Tesh because, um, you know, uh, I'm curious. I just want to know. And I don't, I don't want to give up on my business and I don't want to give up on, on what we've built together. Uh, because it's not just me. You guys are very much a part of this. So, uh, what you say in your opinion, uh, that matters to me. So, uh, Aaron, oh, Aaron Ritchie is in the house. Hang on belt. She's going to pitch one of her own wines here any second now. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I got a buster chops every time she tunes in. I'm like, Oh, she's going to, She's going to be all up in the comments with like, hey, go drink this one. <laughs> um, nice. All right. Anyway, so, hey, man, t tell us about some tasting notes that you pick up. Like, what are you picking up on the nose? The nose is very distinct to me. Somebody said granite. I think that's a great call. Totally. Um, I think granite's a great call. I'm getting like a little bit of like a uh, like little, uh, I'm a little balsamic here like balsamic vinegar, like not the vinegar part, but kind of like the musky part, the like kind of like the kind of danky, danky dark fruit. Yeah. Um, there's, I'm getting some oak on this wine too. There's a pretty, uh, there's, a, there's a little bit like kind of subtle vanilla in here because there is some new oak on this wine and it does see 16 months of oak. Um, do you know, do you know how much of that is new? Uh, 80%. Oh, that, that's a lot of new oak. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, but they're big. You was right. Uh, they're they're big cask, like 300, 300 liter cask. So they're not really technically barrique. So maybe not like, uh, you know, that's definitely not a dominant flavor. You know, right. It's just it kind of helps boost the fruit and has helps add structure. I think, you know. 
For sure. Um, it's, uh, I mean, yeah, balsamic, uh, like really, like, I mean, even a little bit of like raspberry, like there's some bright berry here, like kind of coinciding with that. Mm -hmm. um, you know, even, even, uh, I, but I still don't think the fruit quality is like super cooked. It has a freshness to it. So I like bright raspberries, uh, maybe a little boysenberry, balsamic. Um, the granite's a really good call. Like there's a, there's definitely like some, some rock here, like some on the nose coming out. Yeah. yeah, and get that for sure. Um, there's a little bit of bay leaf, kind of like, kind of floating around in the background for me. Mm -hmm. um, what else I got? Yeah, a little bay leaf, maybe even a little, almost, almost a mintiness, but I'm gonna stick with the bay leaf. I like it. I think that's a good that's call. Yeah. That's what I'm feeling. That's a, those are great tasting notes, man. I think that kind of nails this wine. Um, I, I'm pick up also. I think that raspberry is a great call, especially on the nose, on the palate, and on the nose just a little bit. I get a little bit of blueberry as well, um, but that's just me. Uh, I, th I think this is a stunning wine. This is definitely like in the box, right? We always try and like I always try and when I put them together. Sometimes it's like a matter of balancing uh, different price tiers, right? So like the Bastide, even though it's like a little bit more of a, uh, a friendly price point, um, it, it I think it over delivers for it, its price point. But then like that allows us to be able to taste wines like this that just totally is like a huge treat. Um, and I think it's absolutely – it's this is like just stupid good. Uh, uh, a couple of people said vanilla, yes, granite, bay leaf. Um, Diana also said yes, bay leaf, uh, sweetness. Yeah, I, I agree. I think that this is a, a beautiful, beautiful bottle of wine. For those of you, I'm curious, who else made ribeyes? So I know that the Alessios made ribeyes. Tori, did you guys make ribeyes? Nora, what are you guys having for dinner? I want to know that. And also, is Ralph and Marianne with you? What's going on there? Because uh, I think you guys are, are doing the box together this month, right? So I want to know. Uh, and I want to know, are the Shelbys watching? What's going on with the Shelbys? If they are, they're awfully quiet. Um, look at you, Aaron Ritchie. We see you. Um, yeah, I want to know who else did who else did ribeye uh, because I'm curious how well you think it's pairing. And more, more importantly, I'm curious if you made a Cajun ribeye. Because uh, that was my recommendation. Uh, you did the alone version of your rub on our on tri tip. Works great with the Spanish wine. Dope, beautiful, Tori. I'm glad to hear that. Um, cool. Are there any questions? Does anybody have any questions for Chris in regards to both or either of the wines in regards to? the uh, Bastide Miraflores or the Alto Moncayo. Are there any questions at all? Oh shit. Sorry. Time out. Money B is in the building. Uh, what's up money B? <laughs> you know who you are. Uh, <laughs> uh, does, does anybody have any questions though? Distracted by purchasing some wines. Hey man, good distraction. I will take that all day, every day. Uh, on the note of purchasing some wines, um, I'll wait for you guys. If you guys have questions, hit us in the comments, obviously, and I, I will address any, any questions that come up. Uh, but on the, on the note of, um, uh, purchasing some wine, uh, look, I want to celebrate, right? So I've been kind of out of the game in terms of the restaurant scene. And I, honestly, like I was, I was hesitant to get back into the restaurant scene. Uh, but the Sutter Club is different. It is different. It's primarily an event space. Uh, you know, dinner is really only served so many nights out of the week uh, in their in their private dining room, uh, the the grill, uh, and um, they're closed on weekends. They take the entire week off, like after Fourth of July, uh, the week after uh, Christmas. They're closed. Like it just like. All this stuff that was like, that like always made, and also like I was pretty straight up with them. That's all my, I'm not trying to go back to work in 10, 12 hour days. Uh, and they were like, we don't want you to, you know? And I was like, cool. Like that's beautiful. Like that's music to my ears. Yeah. Um, and so all these things kind of uh, led, led to me um, 
going back to that. So all that to say, I want to celebrate and I wanted to share that celebration with you guys somehow. So I thought that it would be kind of cool uh, to knock down uh, some pricing for you guys um, for, for the, like the last like few days of this month. Um, so here's what I'm going to need starting. Let's do it from like, let's do it like this starting on the 25th, which is just a couple days away. Uh, visit the website. And for those of you guys who are watching, now you're in the know. Thank you for watching and sticking through to the end. Uh, there'll be some, there'll be some discounted pricing. You'll see like sell prices up on some of the items. Um, I just, I want to, I want to celebrate and I want to share that with you guys. So uh, let's do that by drinking some wine, whether it's together or, uh, or you drinking it from the comfort of your home. Let's see. Uh, could you say anything about where and how the label came to be? Kind of reminds me of other labels we purchased. Which one, Diane? Are you, I'm assuming that you're talking about the Alto Moncayo, uh, just yeah. because it is a beautiful label. So, Chris, can you, can you talk about that? You know, um, I do know that the Veraton name, uh, Jorge, is the, the, you know, the winemaker, the, um, is kind of a history buff. So, Veraton apparently... Re- relates to a uh, uh, a village, an ancient village, and its inhabitants uh, from this very storied area, which used to be known as uh, the Kingdom of Aragon. But as far as like this label here, this like like really cool like uh, towel work art piece, like it looks like broken mosaic. Um, I don't know the name of the artist. I don't know, but I I would um, I know that it's a local artist that uh, which generally. You know, I, I can't say for certain. So I'll have to find out. I can find out for certain. I'll let Tesh know, and hopefully he can get that info over to you. Yeah, I can shoot you an email and let you guys know. Uh, the second one. I must, yeah, I figured that this is the one that you're talking about. The label is absolutely stunning. I agree. Um, and not uncommon, right, for wineries to, like, hook up with, like, a local artist and show them some love. Uh, there's a couple of my favorite wineries. Um, Lee Wynn Estates out of Australia does that. Uh, Buttonwood right here out of Santa Barbara does that. Um, so yeah, my oldest sister just told me to chug. (laughs) That's just how I drink. I don't know what you mean. Chug, not chug wine. (laughs) Chugging wine is for fools. Actually, another fun story. Sidebar, another fun story. Uh, my first glass of wine, a lot of people ask me what got me into wine. My first glass of wine was a glass of like 1960 something German Riesling. Um, and my cousin who, who was the AGM, uh, of Morton, San Francisco now actually owns his own restaurant right next to Morton, San Francisco, uh, called Cafe La Tazita. So go check that out. If you're ever in San Francisco, go show him some love. Uh, his name's Clarence, go bug him. Um, uh, he poured me my first glass of wine and I did in fact chug that glass and he was like, whoa, dude, like, that's a pretty special bottle. Like, what the fuck? You know what I mean? And I was like, oh, dude, I'm so sorry, man. It just tasted so damn good, man. Like, I just, I had to drink it. And so I'm like, right? And, and I finished my first glass, and he's like, dude, just chill. And I'm like, he's like, just <laughs> sip on it, enjoy it, and, like, appreciate it. And I was like, okay, cool. Well, I didn't know I, I, I was like 23, 24, and I, I had just started drinking. <laughs> And uh, and he taught me how to be classy. <laughs> yeah. He taught me he taught me like the difference between like like drinking classy beverages and like, <laughs> hey man, if you're just gonna order a kettle tonic, do what you need to do. You know what I mean? And I'm like, all right, cool. Uh, yeah. And so so yeah, so that was my first glass of wine. And also my cousin, uh, who's a, a a great dude, uh, he kind of he kind of got me into drinking. He poured me an amazing glass of wine. Um, it's not a shooter. It's not a shooter. But, you know, sometimes motherfuckers be shooting shit. I don't know. Uh, my sister said Bastide is a good chill, too. Cheers. Dope. I'm glad you like it, sis. Thanks for uh, thanks for uh, tuning in and for enjoying the wines, too. I appreciate that. Um, what else? Chris, you got anything else that you want to share with anybody about what you got going on and uh, a- anything at all? I mean, honestly, nothing, nothing comes to mind. I'm just... I'm just humbled and honored to be here with you. I love what you're doing. I love uh, I, I love this program you got going. I think it's I think it's dope that you invited me. I really uh, I'm really honored that you that you had me on. Thanks, man. I appreciate your time. Thanks for thanks for taking time away from your family, um, and for being here and and all that good stuff. Um, 
Sincerely, I mean that. And I know it's not, uh, I, I know that family time is important. That's part of the reasons why you, why you go into sales, right? Is you can be home in the evening with your kids. Uh, so, uh, yeah. so thank you. And, and I also, have, I do have one thing I want to say. Don't be, for anyone who's hating on your white wine box, don't hate on a white wine box. Get in there, try to, try to get into these white wines. That's worth your time. You know, like once you open that up, you have, a ton of other wines to drink with dinner, outside of dinner, and more shooters. Like, talk about shooting wine. That's some white wine right there. You can get a bottle. Dude. Yeah, so don't right, be scared yeah, take, of the white wine. Take it to the face. Uh <laughs> <laughs> Put your face in it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I appreciate that, Chris, man. Uh, so, okay, so for those of you guys who are out there, uh, White Wine Box is coming soon. I'm finalizing the details of that tonight. Um, so that'll be coming at you and I'll get that updated on the website very, very shortly. Um, so keep an eye out on that over the next probably 24 hours. Cause I want to have that locked in. Um, and then, yeah, keep an eye out the last five days, uh, of this month, uh, for, uh, for some discounted pricing for those of you guys who buy a lot of wine for me. Uh, I want to, um, I want to show you guys some love. So I, I appreciate uh, you guys uh, tuning in all the time. And so so you guys are the ones to know about it. Unless people come back and watch this till the bitter end, they're not going to know. Uh, Tori, the white wines will probably come from Italy. Um, I think that Italian white wines, we probably sleep on a little too much. Uh, and they are stunning. They're stunning. Um, there are some amazing Greek whites that I would love to share with you guys. But um, I'm going to keep it 100 with you guys. The, the, best, the best producer of a Greek white wine, in my opinion, is Domaine Sigalas. And uh, Domaine Sigalas just isn't in a price for me to feature in the Tesh box. Uh, and that's just as simple as it is. It, it, has, it has rightfully so gained a lot of attention over the last four to five years um, and has gotten progressively more pricey. Um, I do have that white wine on my website. If you want it, uh, wait until the last few days. It might go on sale. We'll see. Um, but it is, it is, in my opinion, um, it's 100% Asir to go. Uh, that's the name of the varietal. And I think it's one of the most beautiful uh, white wines that you can get out of uh, Greece. And it comes from uh, the island of Santorini, uh, which my buddy Ryan Sherman. Do you know Ryan Sherman by any chance? I do know Ryan Sherman, yes. He's he's a realtor, but he's also a winemaker at Fields Winery in Lodi. But he like yeah. knows everybody. Like he knows everybody. Yeah. He's a good dude. He he's over in, in Santorini right now. And I was yeah. like, damn, bro, like he's just selling houses and going to Greece. <laughs> <laughs> That's not bad. That's the good life. Uh, please check out Desperata. She does a lot of whites. Okay, I'll check that out. Uh, I'm an Italian, but whites got to come from Greece. I feel you, dog. Uh, I'll, I'll do my best to present some wines to you that I believe in, um, as always. I, you guys already know this, but uh, I, don't, I don't put the wines into uh, the program, and I don't put them uh, on Wine Talk uh, unless uh, it's something that I want to drink. Because ultimately, uh, if business goes under... Uh, there's only one person stuck with these wines, baby, and that's me. So, I, you know, if I'm stuck with them, I want to drink them. Uh, so have faith that uh, that I always try and pick wines that uh, are going to be uh, enjoyable for my palate, but also uh, for a broad variety of palates. So, all right, guys, I think that's all we got. Chris, thanks again. Uh, Jordan, thanks Thank again you, for Tess. being in the background and making everything look dope. I appreciate thanks, everybody. Uh, until next time, we'll talk to you guys soon. Uh, and remember, always drink wines that mean something to you. All right, guys, peace. Nice. She said that she hate me, I hate me too I can always tell when you're lying, girl, you're see-through All these miles away, yeah, I just wanna see you Baby, give me good faith, she hit me like seafood Remember when I saw you, I it's nice to meet you Know my old girl salty, she just wanna be you I'm a dog, no Maltese, I don't wanna leave you Once you're right here, I just don't wanna mistreat you, no Cause I've been a douchebag before, baby girl I don't wanna repeat she just won't please me, she look in my eyes, told me why are you bleeding? And I don't even know how to answer I take these drugs 
rest of my bladder She said she noticed a pattern She say I look gorgeous I tell her I'm flattered But I hate my reflection When I look at you All I see is perfection I'm so depressed And I don't know the reason Just wanna feel better Hate my reflection When I look at you All I see is perfection I'm so depressed and I don't know the reason Just hope I feel better Don't know the reason Just hope I feel better I just hope I feel better You said that you love me Don't know if it's still true Hate it when you're not here Love it when I'm with you You say you don't trust me All the shit we've been through Why you always upset? I don't really get you I don't really get you Why should I always gotta be so stressful? Baby, can you tell me why are you so vengeful? I don't understand you I can't live without you But I can't fucking stand you I'm just so obsessed I should take better care of myself But fuck it Blacked out in public On that like she upset But I know she love it I hate my reflection And I look at you All I see is perfection I'm so depressed And I don't know the reason Just wanna feel better Hate my reflection when I look at you, all I see is perfection I'm so depressed and I don't know the reason, just hope I feel better